Welcome back guys. Well, we're going to talk about these little graphs, graphs, whatever you want to call them, and how you use them and how to understand them. Okay, so we're going to start on this side because it's, I think, is the easiest one to understand. So you have amps down here and you have watts QC which is moved, amount of heat moved, how much power, and the delta. So that is, if you like, how cold the object you're going to move. So if we take a 16 amp line, which is this one here, ole mole. <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> you can see that we can move a load of 25 this one here to a 50 degree delta right so that means we can cool a very small amount of heat load to a very low temperature now if we went to the next line which is this one here which is 30 degrees lower or cooler so that is uh, delta between the hot side of the TC and the cold side, we can now move approximately 140-ish watts. We go to the next line, which is a 20 degree delta, we can move approximately 200 watts. And we then have a 10 degree delta, and we can move a load of 250 watts. And then we go to a delta of nothing, and we can move approximately 320. Now, of course, doing this is pretty much pointless. And I would also suggest that a 10 degree delta is going to be pretty pointless. You'd normally want a greater temperature difference between the hot side and the cold side of the TEC than 10 degrees of theoretical delta before you actually start, and of course, add in the actual losses so obviously you can add more power or less power along here add more power or less power and this will move this line either way and change how much you can move so if we went to 24 amps which is this line here we, to a delta of zero we can move I don't know what that's going to be, 390 watts. And we could move our 30 degrees. We could now move almost know, 190 watts. That's hopefully fairly understandable. This next one over here is probably of less value to people. Uh, but it's still worth talking about. Now if we try and apply 16 amps, which is this line here, <laughs> yes that's horrible, we then get a variance in voltage. Now that is because there is a difference on how much the TEC is, is moving. So and you'll see this in videos and your tests, right? So you apply uh, 15 volts, say, to a TEC. Now, the computer or whatever you're turning on is off. You turn it on, and you'll find that your TEC pulls a lot of power, and it slowly reduces. And that is this, this, this difference between here and here, or if you like, from here to here. Because as when you turn it straight on, there is you're effectively applying all of the possible Qmax because at at that time there is no delta difference between the the hot side and the cold side. It has to create that delta delta, so it has to move all of that heat. So even though you might be applying a hundred watt load, when you turn that TEC on, it's going to be moving more than the hundred. Uh, watts because it has to get to your desired delta 
So you end up with this this drift in uh, in amps or volts, depending on which way you're you're controlling things. So that you probably won't use that too much, but this is this is essentially working out how much power it's going to use, which will vary in reality. It should be fairly stable once you achieve uh, the equilibrium of the temperature. But in the meantime, you're going to have a drift from using more power to, to less power. So that's uh, those explained, and hopefully you can now use them and work out roughly how much power you're going to use, which you could say it's 16 amps at 15 volts. It's going to use about 240 watts. And we can move that 16 amps to a 30 degree delta. We can move our 140 odd watts for our for our 200 and whatever it was. 240 watts of electricity. We can move about 140 watts to a delta of 30 degrees. Now. Finally, it is important to remember that this is theoretical. This does not include all the, the losses of thermal conduction on both the hot side and the cold side. It's also important to remember that where the, TC, uh, sorry, TC, where the CPU reads itself from, its temperature, is within the die, and there is also conduction losses through the heat spreader and the thermal tim paste that's under it, and the actual silicon die itself till it gets to where it measures it from. So you get, there's quite a big difference between the temperature of the actual TEC and what the temperature will read in a computer's CPU or motherboard, depending, which is two different locations normally. So that's why you will need a delta, a theoretical delta, much greater than the delta you want to achieve because there are losses. So hopefully that was helpful and you've enjoyed that and that has helped you understand the last part of a specification sheet which is common. Uh, I have used this TEC provider because they are reputable. They tell you everything you need to know, how many couples, uh, amps, the hot side of, and the, it was measured at. Uh, and they, I have never had anyone tell me that they had a TEC fail from these guys. Which, of course, does happen. But that is a free plug for them. Alright, I shall see you on the next one, guys. Bye-bye.